Hi everyone, what time is it? It's new FAQ time, that's right. The Netrunner developers have been hard at work uh, pouring through the rules and fixing all the stuff that has gone wrong. So now we have this wonderful uh, official FAQ that hopefully addresses a lot of problems that we might have had. Today I'll be covering um, the changes. Firstly, the important ones that you need to know as a player of the game if you want to keep up with the latest rules. After that, we'll go through some relatively trivial changes that uh, probably don't really matter for reasons we will find out later. So, let's start with the important changes immediately. First and foremost, probably the most important one, power shutdown has been errated. Now you cannot mill more cards than the highest install cost among all programs and hardware. Uh, this means, for example, if the runner has only a magnum opus installed, you can choose as the corp to mill 0 to 5 cards, any number between those including uh, 0 and 5, but you cannot mill 6 or more. This has a severe implication on decks that you uh, abuse power shutdown um, to mill their entire deck to combo. So CI7 is the obvious target here. You can no longer mill your entire deck with power shutdown. Unless um, the runner obviously has uh, an installed hardware or program that exceeds the number of cards in the corpse deck. So a very important change that severely nerfs CI7 and makes it almost unplayable in this current iteration. Um, it's also worth noting that you cannot use power shutdown uh, when the runner has no programs or hardware installed because uh, that would cause no change in game state, therefore it's not allowed. Right, next change is uh, scavenge. Uh, before scavenge, uh, the trashing of an installed program as power scavenge was an additional cost, but now it's no longer an additional cost, it is part of scavenge's effect and if you do end up trashing a program with scavenge, you get to resolve the second half, which allows you to install a program at discounted costs. This has two implications. Firstly, be, uh, it works now with ShadowNet, because ShadowNet ignores additional costs. So with the previous uh, version of scavenge, if you use ShadowNet on scavenge, you will ignore the additional costs, you will ignore the trashing of an installed program, and this means that you cannot install a program with a discounted cost. The second implication is probably more important. This one implies that um, sca using scavenge without a valid install target in your grip or heap at the time of playing scavenge is no longer, uh, yeah, it's no longer a violation of the game state changing rule. So <clears throat> basically, what this means is that uh, because you can now trash an install program that is now part of scavenger's effect, um, that causes a change in game state. You can now scavenge programs even if you have no valid targets at the time of using scavenge. <clears throat> targets in terms of uh, programs that you can install from your grip or heat. But this uh, is a very narrow niche case and it probably doesn't imp uh, apply to most of you players. So let's move on to the next card. MC Informant has been errated at long last. Hallelujah. It can no longer be hosted on Corporate Troubleshooter because it can now only be hosted on runner connections. Next up, we have security testing. This is now uh, functionally errata to be in line with patron's effect. Um, the selection of a server at the start of your turn is now optional. So you can choose to not target a server with sec testing at the start of your turn, if you wish. Next change is Fumiko Yamamori. This is not really a new ruling. If you have been following the UFAQ, you would know that this ruling is really valid. But for those of you who haven't, here it is. Um, Fumiko triggers after Psy effects. <clears throat> so this is actually rather important uh, for the psychic field interaction, which was explicitly um, ruled in the official FAQ. Um, psychic field's net damage triggers first, emptying the runner's hand if the runner loses the Psy game. After that, Fumiko will trigger, dealing the one meat damage, they have no cards in their hand, and they will flatline. So yes, this is now a possible kill combo. Fumiko triggers after Psy effects, applies to Psychic Field, but also cards like Caprice Nisei and Psy Ice. Next up, uh, we are done with the important changes. We'll now go through uh, the minor changes. Firstly, there have been a lot of templating problems and mishaps in uh, the current cycle, as well as especially Terminal Directive. And most of them have been addressed in the UFAQ. Um, so if you have been following the UFAQ, there have been no new changes. Uh, but basically, if you haven't, all you need to know is that as long as you're reading the cards with common sense and playing them sensibly as you would expect, uh, you don't really need to read the FAQ for these changes. An example is right on the screen here. 
it's very intuitive that you, the trace four on executive functioning has to succeed in order to do one brain damage. The if successful clause is missing, it should be there as with uh, most of the traces. Why is it not here? We can only speculate, but obviously this is common sense and we know how to play it the commonsensical way. Next up, there are some terminal directive fixes. Uh, firstly, uh, the Ehler deck list, the Shaper deck list that has been suggested in the uh, big uh, in the in TD is now legal with one core set. Previously, I think you needed two core sets for it to be legal. The second change is that there's an errata to one of the campaign stickers. Um, I'm gonna avoid spoilers here, so don't worry. Um, if you want to read the card, I mean read the change yourself, go to the official FAQ to find out. Next, um, there's a change in the timing structure charts. Uh, the old charts have been completely revamped with uh, new very, very worthy charts. Um, it will take quite a bit of time to pass through, so I won't uh, show it here, but you can go look at it at your own leisure. For me, the two main changes I spotted was that now there's an explicit timing step for passing ice. It's now step four of timing structure of a run. And the second change in timing structure of a turn, there's an ex explicit step for refreshing recurring credits. So that's about all the changes. The most important thing to note about this um, official FAQ is that it will be in effect 2nd of June 2017. This implies that it will be in full force um, at American Nationals and Euros Championship in the UK. So very important to note, be familiarized with it before you attend any of these tournaments or for the rest of the regional season after 2nd June. With that, I hope uh, this has clarified things and hopefully this uh, video was pretty succinct. succinct. Uh, sorry for all the trip ups with my uh, speaking, but otherwise, thanks for watching. And as always, happy net running. I'll see you next time.